Second Homes by Grant Eustace, starring Peter Egan as Stamford Holmes and Jeremy Nicholas as Dr. Watson. Episode 2, The Case of the Maltese Pearls. Have I... Uh, hmm, uh, have I got time to get a paper before they call the flight, do you think, Holmes? Watson, you've got time to buy and read War and Peace. Oh, come now, Holmes, we're not that early. Any earlier, we'd have to stay overnight. Now, you know how bad the traffic gets on the approaches to Heathrow first thing in the morning. If you followed my suggestion, the traffic would have been irrelevant. To take a helicopter from central London to here would have been gross extravagance. But I enjoy being extravagant. Yeah, but I don't enjoy helicopters. How do you know? You've never been in one. I have the trained eye of a doctor, Holmes. I know when things are going to disagree with me, and there's something most disagreeable about trusting your life to a contraption that bears no relation to anything in nature. On that yardstick, aeroplane's a little better, Watson. Mm? Man and nature are considerably at odds about flying. For example, according to some aerodynamic thought, the power-weight ratio of a bee means that it's quite incapable of flight. Really? Hmm. Well, again, now I refuse to let you go me into the same state as some of these other people here. What do you mean? Ah, you see, the trained eye of the doctor. Uh. Mm. That's a rough estimate. Nearly a third of these passengers are suffering from self-inflicted stress. Will I miss the flight? Did I remember to lock the house? Have I got the passport? Will the weather be all right when I get there? Have I got time to buy a paper? Have I got time? Mm. Now, you're not suggesting I'm under stress. You decided to accompany me because you've been working too hard and could use the rest, you said. True. But what worried me was that if you went to Malta on your own, it would be a devil of a job getting you back, and there'd be cases piling up in London and you doing nothing about them. Oh, what a delightful thought. Exactly. At least now I know I can make sure you answer the call of your true profession when you're needed. Oh, my profession. If only my grandfather had stuck to chemistry. And I have no intention of getting myself as worked up as... Well, that chap, say. You mean the German computer salesman with the leg injury sustained in a parachute jump? Yes, I, I think so. That one there. He's every right to feel stressed. His wife has just spilled a cup of tea over his trousers. Ooh. Well, that chap over there is another one. <laughs> in that instance, at least, you've proved your point. Ah. But anyone who is foolish enough to father three children and then go travelling with them gets no sympathy from me. <laughs> British Airways announced a departure of flight BA-552 to Malta. 552? That's us, isn't Passengers it? Well, did you, Squadson? Well, I'm damned. I still haven't bought that paper. Well, throw yourself on the mercy of the cabin staff, Watson. They must have something on the aircraft you can read. Your newspaper, Dr. Watson. What? Oh, thank you. How is it you know my name? Oh, you're too modest, Doctor, if you need ask that. A fault I'm constantly chiding him about. From what you've written about Mr. Holmes here, I couldn't imagine anyone else would be on such good terms with him. <laughs> a bit of deduction, eh? You appear to have found a kindred spirit, Watson. Are you flying to motor on the case? Fortunately, no. Watson is having a much-deserved holiday. And Holmes has nothing better to do than come all this way to look at some old people. Fresh documents, Watson, from the time of the Knights of Malta. <laughs> Knights of Malta. Only just come tonight <laughs> after all these years, and I've obtained permission to examine them. Such a waste of talent. Cheer up, Dr. Watson. I'm sure some crime will turn up for you. Please don't encourage him, young lady. I wonder... Would you mind letting me have your autographs? We're not supposed to ask, but... Well, you are rather special people. Not humdrum like most of the people we have to fly. Yes, of course. Can I... We... Write, write some sort of message? To Jane would be fine. Thanks ever so much. I must dash. Jane, eh? Charming girl. Charming. So encouraging to know we're not humdrum. Don't you think, Watson? of hotel, Holmes. <laughs> Always something I can leave safely in your hands. I'm not at all sure my ego can absorb all these compliments. Not only am I not humdrum, but now I have moderately good taste in hotels. Oh, be a good fellow and do the checking in for both of us, will you? Oh, do you There'll be no problem. All... They know me here. Oh. If I don't leave at once, I'll be late for my appointment at the library. Mm. Well, if you uh... restrict yourself to the letter today, Watson, let me recommend Fort St. Elmo, the armory, and the inside of the cathedral. Well, actually... Hmm? 
Well, I, I thought I'd spend a bit of time by the swimming pool. The swimming well, pool? Well, it's a nice day, after all. Such a severely practical mind. The buildings have been here for four centuries, and so should still be here tomorrow. But who knows if the fine weather will be. Uh, you rest your way, Holmes, and let me rest mine. Well, just remember how hot the sun is here. At a pinch, I will eat lobster, but I don't want one as a travelling companion. Mag, 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 that's all I... Over here, Holmes. Oh, Watson. <laughs> what on earth possessed you to buy striped bathing trunks? Mm -hmm. I think they're very becoming. Oh, thank you. Ah, Miss Jane. And you, Tarzan, eh, Watson? Oh, Holmes, really. Jane Mapleton. From our flight, remember? I have some slight recollection. The crew is stopping over here. We, uh, we just bumped into each other. Literally? Well, yes, actually. I knocked the first officer into the pool. And Dr. Watson's <laughs> been telling me about some of your past cases. It's a form of hypnosis he's always practising. Come now, Holmes. Some of the ones he hasn't been able to publish are extraordinary. You shouldn't believe all you are told by gaudily dressed gentlemen encountered beside swimming pools. I told you in London I'm not going to rise to your taunts, Holmes. I'm here to relax and enjoy myself. Have you had a successful day, Mr. Holmes? Most satisfactory. Fascinating documents. They throw a whole new light on some of the decisions taken during the Great Sea. Does that mean you'll be able to join us now? No, I've brought some photocopies back. I can put in a little more work before dinner. But you see, Watson, the messages that were smuggled across Grand Harbour at night are particularly revealing, because up Holmes, until I'm now... Sure it's all very interesting, but could we have a bit of a break from it? Of course, Watson. I'm sorry. Hmm. Uh, is there anything we can profitably discuss about your lying in the sunshine? Oh, certainly. I learned, for example, that being an airline stewardess and being a detective have a lot in common. Really? I'm really sizing people up, judging their mood and so on. Oh, very interesting. Hmm. Did you also learn from Miss Mapleton why she is so agitated? Oh, do you think she is? She is now, unless I'm very much mistaken. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you at dinner. Oh, not at all, not at all. Uh, come and join us. Is, um, is something the matter? Have you read today's paper? I have read nothing later than the 16th century since we arrived. But you know about the Pearls of St. John? No. Part of the regalia of the Grand Master of the Knights of St. John. That's right. Oh, those pearls? Currently on show in London as part of an exhibition about Malta. Which is why the paper here has pounced on it. You see? you better give that to Watson. He's developed a certain flair for reading the news aloud. All right, let's see. Oh, it's headed Attempted Theft of Pearls. Mm. In London last night, an attempt was made to steal the Pearls of St. John, which are the centrepiece of the Malta exhibition being staged there all this month. Oh, you're right about that, Holmes. Thank you, Watson. Unfortunately, the private security firm engaged by the Maltese government managed to prevent the theft. The owner of the gallery where the exhibition is being held is helping police with their inquiries. A full statement about the incident is expected from Scotland Yard hourly. Hmm. Since I can't imagine you share Holmes's obsession with the Knights of Malta, your interest must centre on the gallery. On the man who owns it. Oh, uh, very good friend, is he? He's my brother, Charles. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, uh, what do you think of the newspaper report, Holmes? Uh, the style is adequate, though somewhat lacking in inspiration. What about the crime, Holmes? Well, there's scarcely the information to form any view at all. I know that Charles wouldn't do anything criminal. He's not the brainiest of people, so he may have done something stupid, but not criminal. So can we help in any way? Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Ah. I have to go back on tomorrow morning's flight anyway, but I was hoping you might be persuaded to come back to London too and give Charles some help if he really is in trouble. Of course we will, won't we, Holmes? Well, I'm sure we won't be able to get seats in the plane at this short notice. I checked. You'll be able to get on. Oh. But I have access to those papers for another two days. Holmes, we should be concerned about the living, not the dead. And you do have photocopies, Mr. Holmes. That was an unguarded remark of mine. Oh, very well, I suppose we must go back. Oh, oh, good. At least in London, Watson won't wear those swimming trunks. Extraordinary how the focus changes when you're back, Holmes. The story splashed all over the front page in Malta. Hard even to find in the papers here. Giving the case the attention it deserves. Uh, it doesn't look good for Jane's brother. The security firm's patrol came past the gallery at about half past ten. 
Not only did they see Charles Mapleton inside, but he was standing close to the case which contained the pearls. That's hardly grounds for a charge. No, but there's more. The Maltese official who was called said that the pearls inside the case had been moved. Mapleton admitted he'd opened the case, but only to adjust the pearls. Difficult to prove otherwise. Answer that, there's a good chap. I just want to finish translating this page. Stanford Holmes's residence. Good Lord, people will think I've got a butler now. Oh, hello, Jane. Oh, that's good news. Yes, of course, bring him round right away. Oh. Not at all. See you in a few minutes. Bye. Jane's brother's been released. He clearly didn't help the police inquiries quite enough. She's bringing him round here. Oh, no. So now he should get the whole story. The excitement of waiting is almost too intense to bear. So what really occurred? How do I know this isn't going to be repeated to the police? Please trust them, Charles. Just because you've been released, you're not out of the wood yet. You may need friends. I shall perhaps mention to you that you run the risk of Dr. Watson publishing a story in which you feature prominently. Oh, I'm not very keen on that. That could be avoided, couldn't it? Well, yes, of course. Not that I've broken any laws, but, um, well, I've been a bit of a fool, I suppose. Ah, Jane prepared us for that. What? Uh, well, so there'd be some explanation. <clears throat> oh. uh, this all has to do with a woman. Aha! What does that mean? Well, it's just, um... Well, Holmes's experience is that in bizarre cases, there's, there's usually a woman involved. What's bizarre about this? Just tell us what happened, Charles. <laughs> well, I've been seeing a lot of a girl called Marika over the weekend. Marika, eh? Foreign sounding name. Well done, Watson. Swiss. Yeah, in London, on holiday. Only been here for a couple of days. So, a Swiss tourist, eh? Is that relevant? Could be. Who knows? Well, I thought you might. How did you meet her? Well, it was more like collided in St. James's Street. I knocked her handbag flying. <sighs> well, I helped her pick up the contents, and, uh, well, we just got talking, and... It developed from there. So what about the night before last? We'd had a good dinner, and I'd been talking about the exhibition. Um, she said she'd love to see the pearls. Well, I, I couldn't see any harm in it, so we drove round to the gallery. When you said a good dinner, mm -hmm. did you refer to the quality or the quantity? Oh, well, I don't take a girl out for sausage and mash. But we didn't eat that much, and... We didn't stop for a sweet or even coffee. You do ask the weirdest questions. Well, it's all part of our profession. If they don't know everything, Charles, there won't be much help to you. Oh, well, when we got to the gallery, Marika was very taken with the pearls. She asked if she could try them on. I was a bit reluctant, but... Um, well, she had a very persuasive way about it. Yes, I don't think we need to go into that. But I thought you wanted all yeah, the details. Yeah, there's a lady present. Oh, Jane won't mind. Oh, I do get on with it, Charles. She had a small camera in her bag and asked me if I'd take a picture of her wearing the pearls. Good Lord. Did she have the camera in her bag when you bumped into her? Very good, Miss Mapleton. Well, how should I know? She didn't spill everything out of it. So after the photo, I put the pearls back in their case. Ah, was she reluctant to part with them? Not at all. Oh. But when I'd locked the case and looked around, she'd gone. To let in an accomplice, no doubt. No, the police searched the gallery. It was empty. Oh. The next moment, the security patrol was hammering on the door. The rest you know. Why didn't you tell the police all this? Oh, good thing I didn't. Apart from making me look an idiot, well, I wanted to be sure Marika would back me up. Which she wouldn't have, because I rang her hotel when the police let me go home. She checked out. Oh. It's pretty complicated, this case, eh, Holmes? Oh, very, Watson. Well, I've had enough of it for the time being. Police don't run an impressive hotel, <laughs> so I uh, need to catch up on my sleep. I'll drive you back to the flat. Thanks. You know where to contact me if you need to, Dr. Watson. Yes, of course, Jane. We've seen some odd ones in our time, Holmes, but this... Oh, the only thing that is clear is that someone is trying to steal the pearls. If that is the case, they're being singularly incompetent. But surely, if you consider the events, they can only point to one conclusion. Then why was the photograph taken? Uh, to enable a copy of the pearls to be made. Good Lord, 
They plan to substitute them. No, Watson. A copy of the exhibition catalogue and a visit to the gallery would have served better. Mm. Now, what of this apparent chance meeting in the street? Mm. The ladies wish to see the pearls at night, when she could quite easily have called during the daytime. Mm. The lady's reluctance to eat a complete meal at someone else's expense. Mm. The camera at the ready in her bag, a point Miss Mapleton astutely noticed. Mm. The arrival of the security patrol at the exact moment, mm. and the lady's departure at precisely the same time. <laughs> Oh, well, you only have Mapleson's word for a lot of that. Great Scott, perhaps it's Mapleton himself. There never was a uh, Let us approach this from the point of view that what this rather immature young man says is true and see where that hypothesis leads us. Well, uh... It leads us clearly, does it not, towards a contrived meeting and subsequent relationship in order to be in the gallery at that precise time with the certain knowledge that the security patrol will be on hand. Ah, but how could the girl know that? The papers say that the patrols are at random time. That is something which can be easily checked. Watson? Hmm? Oh, right. Now, if I can have a few moments quiet, I shall return to 16th century, Malta. Right, thank you. Goodbye. Correct again, Holmes, of course. The security firm had an anonymous tip-off to go past at 10.30. But what was the point of that? I imagine the photograph is the key. It may have escaped your notice, Holmes, but the photograph could easily be in Switzerland by now. Oh, don't tell me there's another case already. <laughs> Before this one's even sold... If it is, I shall escape to 20th century Malta immediately. It's Jane Holmes. Not another of your relatives under arrest so soon, Miss Mapleton. No, Mr. Holmes, it's this. In the post when we got to Charles's flat. Ah, as I thought. I believe you were under the impression this might have left the country, Watson. Good heavens, the photograph. But why has it been sent to Jane's brother? Uh, <laughs> of course, I deduce it. <laughs> Uh, it seemed to me that if Charles had told the police the whole story, he wouldn't really be able to prove the girl's existence. Now he can. I say. But it's been sent only after the girls had a chance to get away. I begin to see, Miss Mapleton, why Watson saw connections with your profession and that of a detective. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Holmes. But that would imply that the girl doesn't mind her picture being seen. She would probably welcome it. Holmes, did you notice that the gallery clock is in the picture? German, made in Nuremberg in about 1825. Oh, really? But it's saying just before 10.30. The time must be important. Well done, Watson. Of course. <laughs> As we thought. It's nothing to do with the pearls. The girl is proving she was in London at that time. Exactly. And for what reason does one usually need such an alibi? <laughs> well, because there's been some crime committed at precisely that time for which she's a suspect. That's right. I must get on to the police right away. Uh, be a good chap and do it quietly, will you? And you've got all the threads now. Why must you drag me all this way? Well, driving to Surrey isn't far, Holmes. You go to Malta for far less. And you deserve to be in at the kill. Is there to be mm. violence, then? Oh, you know what I mean. Oh, good heavens! Did you see that signpost? Should we have taken that turning? No, no. It was marked Stoke Moran. <laughs> that was the scene of one of the most dramatic cases that Holmes's grandfather and my grandfather were involved in. The speckled bat. Oh, yes. I know the story, I think. Excellent. That will spare us Watson retelling it. Hmm. Too much to hope that this place we're going to will be in the same class, I suppose. I trust so. If there is a baboon loose in the grounds, I shall return to London at once. A baboon? Near Leatherhead? <laughs> so the official version of the speckled band would have us believe. <laughs> and a snake that lived in a safe, too. You see that Watson's habit of embellishing a plain tale runs in his family. Well, I haven't made up the fact that this man, Neville Clark, was attacked in his own house at exactly 10.30, the evening before last. How can you be so exact about the time, Mr. Clark? Well, that grandfather clock chimes every quarter of an hour. Ah. Look, I've been through all this with the police. Surely they don't need a private detective on the case as well. well we may have come upon information which the police do not yet have. Tell me, have you seen the young lady in this photograph before? Well, well that's... that's Krista. Krista? 
Another alias, eh? That's the girl who attacked me. Mr. Clark, if you note the time on the clock in the pit shop... Old German one, as a matter of fact. Thank you, Watson. You will see that it's showing the same time as the assault on you. But was this taken two nights ago? It was. There's no question you're mistaken? None at all. A ridiculous question. That's extraordinary. On the contrary. It was totally predictable. But why do you say she did it? Uh, well, because I was expecting her here then. She'd gone up to London for a couple of days before her holiday was over. She was... Yes? Uh, going to spend the last two nights staying here. I see. <clears throat> you were... Uh, you known her some time, then? No, I only met her last week. She was just a tourist. You make a habit of this sort of thing, do you? I don't answer questions made in that tone of voice. Oh, tone Did of you voice? see your assailant? I... Uh, no, no, I just heard a noise. I went into the study, and that was the last I knew for about 20 minutes. How are you knocked out? With one of my own ornaments from the mantelpiece. Smashed to pieces. So, what did this burglar steal? Huh. Well, that's the damn fool part. Nothing. Nothing at all? That's what I said, isn't it? Didn't even touch anything if the fingerprint people know what they're doing. Powder all over the house, not a trace of a print. Now, look, uh, take your photo to the police, will you, and leave me and my headache in peace. Lemon tea. For the lady. Thank you. Coffee? For me. Thank you. So you'll be the pot of tea, then? Very reasonable deduction. No need to be rude. Tourists. Oh, Humorless woman. Now, but what sort of burglar doesn't take anything, even when the occupant of the house is unconscious? A woman. Why do you say that? I don't know about the burglary, but the alibi with Charles and the photo makes it obvious to me. No man would plan something that relied on a woman getting a man to do exactly as she wanted. His pride wouldn't let him believe in it. A woman would know how easily it could be done. Good Lord, Jane. <laughs> a bit cynical. No, there is a certain elegant logic in that. Man or woman, you don't set up something like this to burgle a house and then not take anything. I agree. Oh, really? So, what can we deduce? Uh, the woman has gone to extreme lengths to keep her identity secret. So I think Clark knows her. Agreed. But she didn't intend to attack him because she had to use an ornament, picked it up in the heat of the moment when, when Clark came into the study unexpectedly. Very good, Watson. Oh, I say. So she did come to steal, not assault. Then why didn't she? Perhaps she did. I shall have another word with Mr. Clark, and to save wasting any more precious time, you drop me there and then start investigating the local hotels. Local hotels? Oh, we're looking there. for a Swiss lady. Or German or Austrian, I imagine. Checked in about a week ago and left yesterday. Drink up, Watson. We're nearly there. No, yes, of course. Mm. Sorry. Now, Mr. Clark. Look, I thought I said that I, I shall didn't leave want to... just as soon as we resolve this. Now, assume your attacker was a woman you know. She takes no money or valuables. What else do you have that might interest her? Nothing. I find that difficult to believe. Meaning that I'm lying? I was trying to express it as delicately as I could, but if you insist on the word, I will not contradict you. And what souvenirs do you keep of your lady friends? Hmm? Incriminating letters, perhaps? What are you talking about? Or is it photographs? Let's have a look in your desk for a start. Well, you've got a bloody nerve. Now stay exactly where you are, Mr. Clark. Now, oh, what have we here? A photo album. Uh, keep your hands off that. Oh, yes. Quite a collection of ladies, all carefully annotated. Now, look here. Ah, one missing. What? Miss Catherine Rollinger. What? Oh, the scheming little bitch has stolen her picture. More power to her elbow. I'll take the rest. Give that back to if me. If you wish me to place a second lump on the back of your head to match the first, I shall be pleased to do so. That is my property. Material for blackmail is forfeit. What? Well, you've got no case against me. Taking photographs of young ladies in what I can only describe as compromising circumstances will lead to that, if it hasn't already done so. And if Fraulein Rollinger found it necessary to come all this way, you are doubtless not as innocent as you suggest. What are you going to do with it? Destroy it. I see all these are Polaroid photographs, so I don't need to trouble you for the negatives. Good morning, Mr. Clark. <laughs> We 
We found her, Holmes. Of course you did. And she's still here. Is she? She is a cool customer. Look, I left Jane to watch the hotel and came back for you. Come on. All right, Watson. There's Jane over there. I'm afraid she's left, Mr. Holmes. What? Not long after you went, a taxi drew up. She came out of the hotel and got in. I rushed over to see if I could catch the instructions to the driver, and she wound down the window and gave me this. Then the taxi drove off. Good Lord, this letter's addressed to you, Holmes. She's clever as well as cool. Go on, Watson, you're bursting to open it. Oh, right. <clears throat> Dear Mr. Holmes, I had planned not, not to draw, draw attention, attention to, to myself, myself by, by a sudden, sudden departure. departure. But where Dr. Watson and your other charming helper are, you cannot be far behind. So, you find the nest empty. You will have discovered it was me who entered Neville Clark's house. I did not intend to harm him, but I am not sorry that it happened. It was not the money he asked for, but the threat to send a photograph to my fiancé. Austria is a very conservative country, and a family with Habsburg blood in it even more so. I was not prepared to have my future happiness spoiled by one youthful indiscretion. I enclose a small memento of my, my younger, younger cousin. Cousin? Oh, it must be in the envelope. Ah, a negative. Why, it's the girl in the gallery. She has a definite touch. It's signed Catherine, Catherine Rollinger. Rollinger, yes. At the risk of compounding a felony, we'll let her go. Oh? Uh -huh. Clark only got what he deserved. <laughs> I still don't understand. Oh, Watson. Catherine knew that if Clark noticed the break-in, he would phone the police. She therefore had to make sure he would immediately suspect someone else, not her. Hence the setting up of the relationship between him and her cousin. Well done, Miss Mapleton. Eh, Watson? Uh, uh yes. But Catherine also had to make sure that her cousin wouldn't be arrested. That's why she arranged that alibi involving my brother. By the time the truth came out, the two girls would be out of the country. Good. And now we can return to London. I have an album to burn, and then perhaps I should consider visiting Vienna to research into the Habsburg archives, perhaps? The lady does have a record of hitting men over the head, Mr. Holmes. You're right. It would be a trifle wearisome making sure I never turn my back on now, her. Holmes, you can't possibly go to Austria. There'll be more cases to solve here. But just think, Watson, you might find yourself on another flight with Jane here among the cabin crew. That's easily arranged. Uh, really? <laughs> well, of course they... You see, Vienna's a most attractive city. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean it. Uh, then, then there's that delightful Strauss music. And good Lord, all those chocolate cakes. You know them, what would they call them? That episode of Second Home starred Peter Egan as Holmes and Jeremy Nicholas as Watson, with Catherine Hurlbut as Jane Mapleton. Charles Mapleton was played by Alex Jennings, Neville Clark by Edward Cast, and Catherine by Wendy Murray. Second Holmes was written by Grant Eustace and produced by Paul Mayhew Archer.